Hi guys, welcome to this, the first in a series of tutorial videos, starting with the Airbus X Extended from Aerosoft. Now for the purpose of this demonstration, I'll turn the batteries on to show you how to get to the cold and dark state. If we go over to the MCDU2 menu, click on aircraft state, and then click load and dark. All the displays should be turned off, and you should just be left with the external power available. Now we start with a cockpit safety inspection. So we check that the engine masters 1 and 2 are set to off. The mode selector is set to normal. The landing gear lever is down. The windscreen wipers are off. And we check that the batteries are displaying greater than 25 volts. We can then turn the batteries on. Once that has been completed, we can start the cockpit preparation. You can either turn the external power on or we can turn the APU on so master switch on start switch on we then check the ecam display turn it on using that switch there and the lower through that switch check the EP APU N1 is 100 and the exhaust gas temperature should be in the range of 550 the documentation is aboard so we then check that the parking brake is set to park the flaps are up and indicated up. The speed brake is retracted but not armed. The ECAM engine page is normal and the cross bleed is set to auto. Moving on, we turn the primary flight displays to on, navigation display to on, check the flight director is set to on, the ILS is off. We then set the Q&H, so currently we've got 1003 as default. You can either set this manually or you can press B on the keyboard and that gives us a Q&H over leads of 984 hectopascals. We then check the flight control unit, so speed should have a dash line, heading should have a dash line and we set our initial climb altitude which today will be 5000 feet. We then check the anti-skid and nose wheel steering is set to on. Moving over to the radio panel, we set the radio panel on. The comms frequency will be set. Thrust leaders are set to idle. The engine master switches are still off and the mode selector is still off. We then set the transponder on standby, which it is already set. Moving back onto the overhead panel. We set the seatbelt signs to on, no smoking signs to on, and the emergency exit lights to armed. Set the landing elevation to auto. Switch the fuel pumps on. And then we move on to the MCDU FMGC. So we should have reset IRS to nav. Move back onto the overhead panel. Now in the top left corner you've got the ADIRS. Set the first one to nav, the battery should extinguish. Set the third one to nav, on bat extinguishes, and the IR2 to nav. Once on bat is extinguished, we can go back into the MCDU2, clear that message, click the init page. So today we'll be doing a flight from Leeds, which is Echo Golf November Mike, to Manchester, which is Echo Golf Charlie Charlie. That goes in the From To page. We then click the Align IRS button. Today we'll be using Monarch 320 as a flight number with a cost index of 10, cruising at 6,000 feet. Once the unit page has been completed, we go to the flight plan page. So today we'll be using a runway 14 departure on a Pole Hill 2 X ray. Press insert. Destination Echo Golf Charlie Charlie arrival. We'll just be using vectors for an ILS 23 right. Insert that. Check that there's only one flight plan discontinuity, and that should be after your final waypoint before vectoring for uh, the landing runway. Once you've done that, we can go to the uh, RADNAV page. Now in VOR1, Paul. Uh, Pole Hill is selected and in VOR2 I have Trent selected. ILS frequency should be uh, the runway that you are taking off from, so runway 14 has an ILS frequency of 110.9. 
Once that's been completed, we can go back to the init page, and if we click the uh, right key there, it's asking for us for a block fuel weight. So if you go into aircraft, fuel and payload, you can see that today I've put fuel of five tons in, just as an example. So five into the block weight. That should fill itself in for you, so you don't need to do anything more with that. Then go to the perf page. Transition altitude of 6,000 feet. We're going to be using flap 1. Stay lines are 0.8. Flex to temp today of 64 degrees with a V1 of 115, V2 127, uh, 128, and a rotation speed of 127. Then go back and check the flight plan. And now all your altitude uh, should be input. So once you've waited for the IRSs to align, you should get the PFD and the navigation displays. It should be visible. We can start the before start pushback procedure. So you obtain ATC clearance. You check the windows and doors are closed. So you should see the red tape there. So that's open and that's obviously closed. We then check that all doors are closed. So if we go to the ECAM door page, you can see that the cabin door is still open. So aircraft doors. Front left is orange. So if we qu click the select key. We obtain push and start clearance from air traffic control. And once you've done that, you check that the thrust levers are set to idle, the parking brake is set to park, the transponder is uh, inputted with the squawks, the before start checklist is complete so windows and doors are closed, turn the beacon on, the thrust levers are idle and the parking brake is set. To initiate pushback set the parking brake to off and then you press shift and P to start pushing and you should notice we are moving backwards. To start the engines you set the mode ignition to start and then you start with master number two is on. We then check the ECAM engine page so the pressure is rising. You see the N2 is rising and one is also rising and you've got a sharp increase in exhaust gas temperature. Once engine two has started we can start engine number one so set the master switch to on. Go back to the ECAM display you see you've got N2 increase and M1 increase. Pressure is rising And the parameters are stabilized and we can go through the after start checklist so we turn the APU bleed off we can arm the ground spoilers we can set the flap levers to one set the pitch trim to take off The APU master switch can go off. Engine anti ice can be as required, and that's the after start checklist complete. So the APU as required, anti ice as required. Check the ECAM status. The flaps are set to 1, the spoiler is armed, we've got pitch set to take off. Once you finish the after start checklist, that is a cold and dark tutorial completed. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and found it somewhat useful. I'll be uh, posting some more tutorials soon. Probably start with the uh, PMDG 737 or 747. But stay tuned for those and I hope you enjoyed this video.